haven't had a hot guy draft in a while, but when we do, it gets a lot of reaction. And we had a hot guy draft. Was that a couple of years ago we did, Paulie? Well, that may have been like uh, six, five, six years ago, okay. a four-round hot guy draft. And uh, Josh Dumel, who normally listens to the show, uh, he was he called in, he talked to Paulie, and Paulie, he wanted to know where he got drafted with the hot guy draft. And Paulie had to say to Josh Dumel, you didn't get drafted. Uh, four rounds. And the reaction, the reaction stunned him. But you know what? He used to be a heartthrob and kind of let itself go a little bit there. And Josh Dumel joins us on the program, the actor, director, and diehard Vikings fan, and of course, former quarterback at Minot State. Wow. What happened to you? I spiraled, Dan. <laughs> are, are you on a bender? <laughs> <laughs> I spiraled after that day. Things just went all to hell. Man, you were disappointed, though, when Paulie goes, God, I, I think I broke his heart when you found out four <laughs> rounds of the hot guy draft and Josh Dumel did not get selected. Yeah, man, it's all fleeting. Yeah, I, 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 I came to terms with that a long time ago, actually. All right. Well, good. Well, yeah, you're a Vikings fan. five or six years ago. You're a Vikings, a Vikings fan. Yeah. I mean, you're used to disappointment. <laughs> uh, next year that's our year okay buddy game spring awakening being released select theaters today and uh june 2nd paramount global content distribution group okay so all the yeah. questions that were left unanswered for the first buddy games they're all answered in the uh, second one we just checked our imdbs we yeah. did we didn't get credit for being in this movie even though we do have a cameo is that is that why I was I was that's what you guys are doing? I thought you were you know taking care of your morning business or something. No, no. What what's the yeah, story? You're, you're check you're checking the the IMDb and it wasn't on there. No, no, no. And I would would have thought well, that well, I would have been on there. Well, you you will be. The movie releases today. I think that that stuff doesn't get credited until after the movie is released. Does no, it? no, because they'll be like working on a movie and who's in the movie, and then it'll say who's in the movie. I'll take care of that, Dan. I promise you, because right. you guys were fantastic. I don't know if you saw it yet. Have you seen it? How would we see it? It's just coming out today. It should have been sent a link. No. No. Yes. Well, you're, you'll be very happy. You oh. guys, you guys did a great job. Okay. Uh, kicking off this movie. And uh, this uh, is your. Be proud. This is your directorial debut. No, I directed the first one too. This uh, is the second Buddy Games movie. Okay, so this is the um, second directorial debut for uh, John. Yes, Schumann. yes. I also directed a Mighty Ducks episode, but nobody cares. Francis Ford Dumel joining us on the Dan Patrick Show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, explain to us what uh, Buddy Games Spring Awakening is all about and uh, who is in this movie who's going to get credit on IMDb. Okay, so we have, uh, well, first of all, you are going to get credited. Mm. I will make sure yeah. of that. I'll call whoever I know mm. over there, which mm. I'd have to do a little research. Uh, <laughs> the movie is about, you know, the, the, the first one was about, you know, pulling one of our buddies out from uh, a dark place and sort of leaving no man behind. And this one, uh, Dak Shepard's character from the first one, uh, tragically uh, passes uh, at the at the beginning of the movie. And... That's partly why you guys were in the movie to sort of report to the world that uh, up up and coming actor uh, John Durfee Jr. has passed. So we, uh, in an effort to memorialize him, uh, and against I guess the family's wishes, steal the urn from the funeral and flee and end up uh, trying to figure out what we're going to do with these ashes. And we decide that we're going to go where he was happiest, where he first fell in love. And that was uh, spring break, 1997. Uh, and we, we, we end up, you know, not realizing until we get there that it is actually happening. Then we thought we we're just going to go to a beach, nice peaceful beach and, and, and say goodbye to our old friend. And then from there, all hell breaks loose and we go completely off the rails. Now you got uh, Kevin Dillon from Entourage, uh, yep. Nick Schwartzen from uh, Grandma's Boy. Just yeah, that's right. Some of the, uh, some of the stars in there. Yeah, Dan Bacchanal is fantastic in the movie. James Roday is is great. Uh, it's a really fun movie, and we and we uh, have some fun with some of the uh, some of the craziness that's going on 
socially in the world right now. And, you know, we, we have fun with it. We're not too mean spirited about it, but we do definitely take some shots. How often do you show up and go, let's make up a scene. Let's just do something improvised. Pretty much every day on these movies, when it, <laughs> whenever you have Nick Schwartz on a set, yeah. you never know what's coming. Yeah. So uh, usually about 50% of the time, it's really good. And 50% of the time, there's no way that's ever making the movie. Uh, but you know, it's guys like that that make these hard hitting comedies work. Uh, and that's really what I wanted to do is make a movie that, uh, you know, was unapologetic and, and really funny and, uh, and, and makes people laugh. In fact, the first one that we did, we tested it and it tested higher with women, Dan, than it did men, which goes to prove that they're just as naughty as we are. But how different is this than you're on the set of Transformers? Well, Transformers is a giant production. I mean, the amount of equipment and crew and sitting around is just unbelievable. We don't have the time or money to do that. We have to be really efficient because we have to, you know, and and a lot, oftentimes that forces you to be even more creative because when you got all the money you need, it's easy to sort of waste. And we didn't have anything in it, time or money to waste on this one. And I had a blast making this. Last time you were intimidated on a movie set. Ooh, it's a good question. Um, gosh, uh, Anthony Hopkins, I, I, I guess. Anthony Hopkins was pretty intimidating, although he's a sweetheart of a guy. Uh, that guy is pretty, you know. I hold him in pretty high regard. But guys get into character, and the character can be intimidating. Not the person, but all of a sudden you're like, damn, okay. that Where'd that come well, from? In, in that same movie was uh, Al Pacino. So I did a movie with Al Pacino and Anthony Hopkins. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? The movie turned out to be terrible. Uh, do you know that? When do you know a movie is going to be terrible? Uh, when you see the first cut. Usually, oh, usually not, not doing it, not not during that, that, that you go, no. oh, God. well, you, you have some, you know, when, when they want to shoot a lot of wonders, you know what a wonder is when they kind of go through in a Ritu does a lot of that, uh, where they, they kind of, the camera never stops moving and it's just one, it's one take basically. Like, uh, it's bird, Birdman. Yes. That would be a wonder. Okay. Uh, and unless the director really knows what they're doing that can be trouble because you have nothing to cut to. And in that movie, we did a lot of wonders and I was like, mm, this could be, this could be dangerous. And sure enough, the movie, I mean, it wasn't terrible. It just was just kind of fell flat. What was the know? name of it? Uh, misconduct. Misconduct. Yeah. But yeah, not like, were great in it. not like M I S S like it wasn't somebody who was miss conduct. It was just, no. yeah, just misconduct. <laughs> just misconduct. Mis misconduct. <laughs> Uh, will there be a Buddy Games 3? Well, there is a Buddy Games TV show coming out uh, on CBS later this fall, which is based on real. It's, it's sort of a mix between Big Brother meets uh, Amazing Race meets like Survivor. Yeah. Where these six groups of friends, like say Dan and the Danettes would compete against me and my buddies who would compete against a group of uh, people from Philly who would compete against people from washington and they all live in this cabin together and they all compete in these ridiculous games and uh it's 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 I, i'm really really excited for people to see that good well it's all buddy games all day over here dan no no i'm very, very happy for you you got your minot state hat on you of course were a legendary quarterback there for the minot state <laughs> beavers and you got your vikings jersey that usually has tears on it come postseason time how are we looking this year you know how you're looking. Regular season, <laughs> you're like, all right, ten wins, eleven wins, and then postseason. Ouch. Let me get. We're, we're good enough to get a a, a pick in around twenty three, twenty four next yeah. year. Yeah. We're usually good, just not quite good enough. Yeah. Although I trust, I trust O'Connell. I trust this this coaching staff. I think they're going to be good, but I say that every year. So I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and just hope for the best. I've spoken to you after a devastating playoff loss at oh. home. That was against Seattle? Yeah, it was at Seattle in Minnesota. Yeah. When they didn't have the dome yet. It was outdoors. That was a co the coldest 
football game I've ever been a part of. It was I had a I had one of those I had a parka I had ski goggles I had one of those hats <laughs> with the fur things, and I had my beer in my parka pocket, and it still froze. <laughs> and Walsh I think made three field goals that game, which were like forty plus, and then he and then he shanks like a twenty three yarder to to lose the game at the end, and and the 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 the, oh, the devastation of those fans leaving that. That that old stadium was just heartbreaking. Well, you know what? When you had me uh, FaceTime, you you called me, and I could see him. Like, man, that's a grown man, and he is <laughs> devastated. You were you were devastated, devastated. Um, they find a new way to break our hearts. Yes, every they year do. Um, hey, good luck with the movie, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing our portion of it, even though we don't get credit for it. I mean, you I didn't will. I didn't even <laughs> charge you anything for that. It didn't cost you anything for us to shoot that. You're so rich, it doesn't matter. You're absolutely right, but we still should have gotten compensated here for the Danettes. <laughs> like like $10 or something for each guy. Well, I, I appreciate you guys doing it, and you are actually very good in the movie. It's it's a fun opening. Good to talk to you. You too, buddy. All right. That's Bye, Josh, guys. Josh Dumel. He's a actor and director, Vikings fan. Former Minot State quarterback. Hi, Josh. Yeah. Hi, hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Yeah, yeah, Paul. Yeah, I looked all over. I cannot find uh, hide nor hair. Our name, your name, any name. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's okay. 